Hello hello and welcome to another episode of the Play on Ultra podcast. This time it's only two people again. Episode 21. Uh but this time it's 8 bit Jordi aka Jordan and uh, me Shar. So yep, two people. This We been the so team. <laughs> this been the team the past couple of weeks. Um So how was your how was your week? Uh good. Canadian Test Gaming, how was it? Oh, uh, it was so good. I think I ate too much because after I was done eating, I had a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I was, my my parents were like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I have a headache. And they're like, that's weird. And I was like, I think I ate too much. So besides that, though, the food was really good. Really, really good. What do you, what do you usually cook or serve? Um, just like your standard stuff. We had... Uh, we had turkey, of course. We had mashed potatoes and roasted. Uh, we had cranberry sauce, um, mm-hmm. beans, mm-hmm. stuffing, and biscuits, gravy, all that kind of stuff. And then for dessert, we had uh, pumpkin cake, spice cake, and that was the first time I had it, and it was actually pretty good. And I was kind of worried about it, but I actually liked it because I don't like pumpkin pie. I hate pumpkin pie, but pumpkin cake was actually pretty good. It's kind of like. Um, Like uh, how carrot cake is, right? Like it has like that tinge of carrot taste to it, but it's not yeah. like really strong. But it's pretty good. So, what is Canadian Thanksgiving, anyways? What is it? Well, just pretty much the exact same as the American counterpart. The only difference is the is the time. The Americans have theirs November, and ours is in October, and it's the um, holiday celebration of the peace between the pilgrims and the native. Uh, North Americans, so yeah, not Eskimos, right? No, 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 <laughs> no, not that, not that I'm aware of, but I'm sure they can celebrate too, for sure. Hmm. Yeah. So, what did you play? Did you have time to play anything? I played actually. I got Shovel Knight for Xbox Ooh, nice. One, and I really do like it. Although. I just don't. I I think it's a good game, but I don't think it's something that's super special. If that makes any sense, like I guess because I played all these other kind of like old school s type games, and especially in the eight bit era, uh, it does play very much like obviously like Ducktales and Mega Man and Zelda, which isn't a bad thing. Um, it's not like it's anything super original, but I do like the game. It's a lot of fun. I got it for my Xbox One. Because um, I want to expand my Xbox One library. Which, speaking of which, I'm gonna be probably broke, like, in the next couple of months because there's so many games coming out that I want to get from Xbox One. I already have Halo Five pre-ordered. I have. Don't tell Fallout. that to Don- Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Fallout Did it come with anything extra? Uh, Halo Five. I'm yeah, not sure. I can't pre-order. remember. I just got the regular edition because when I went to go pre-order it, they're like. Oh, there's three different editions you get. I'm like, I just want the game. I, I'm not gonna fall for that other crap. I don't need that crap. I don't care about <laughs> it. So I got that, and I got Fallout Four. I forgot about Star Wars. But I'm still kind of wary about that. I'll see how that goes. You mean Battlefront? Yeah. Did you try and the beta? No, I haven't tried the beta. Um, I have friends that keep nagging on me to try it, and I don't know. I just, I'm not really huge in the betas. I usually just like to play games on launch day, mm. and with that, I forgot that Tomb Raider comes out in November for Xbox One, the new one that's coming out. So, so all like of these like seventy bucks, right? Yeah, you know they're not cheap. They're like they're definitely seventy dollar games. Um, I'm definitely getting the Fallout Four and Halo Five. I might hold off on Star Wars and probably Tomb Raider. Although I really want to play Tomb Raider because I really did enjoy the last one. Like I beat that. Whole game in one weekend, just because it was so it was so much fun, very compelling game. And besides that, I've been playing uh, Fall Fantasy, and I also started playing um, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I don't know if you heard about yeah, that. Yeah, I know that one. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, um, I saw some videos about it and kind of intrigued me. I like these music rhythm games, and it's like dungeon crawling. So I thought it was a cool idea. I picked it up. It's really hard. It's really oh. hard to play at first, but it's sort of like a rope, like right? Yes, and once you start, you know, getting used to it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's one of those games you can pick up and play and just play for a little bit, and 
set it down and it, it's fun it's a lot of fun so me and uh, Nathan tried the uh, Battlefront beta then we'll probably record something like a uh, our thoughts on that separately but uh, I felt <clears throat> I felt the game was pretty much a Battlefield game with Star Wars skin yeah on top of it it, it um, did you play the uh, previous Battlefronts? Oh man, I played the shit out of those games for like the PlayStation Two. It, it had classes, right? Mm-hmm. And the classes dictate like what kind of loadouts you have. Yeah. So this one doesn't have that. Yeah, isn't it like you just unlock new weapons and stuff? Yeah, you pretty much unlock. Uh, you need to reach a certain level, and then you need to have a certain amount of credits. To buy like cards, your cards are your loadouts. So you can cards are stuff, are stuff like grenades, uh, the fucking OP sniper rifle, uh, jetpacks. So you can so everybody can have jetpacks in this game. That's lame. I remember in the first two, it was usually like the really high level um, stormtroopers or um, the hero class like uh, bounty hunters were usually the ones that got the jetpacks. But if everyone has one, that's kind of lame. Yeah, and th- this the sniper rifle is f- fucking OP as shit. Why do you um, have to do you have to aim with it, or is it just like one of those guns that you can just? Um, the game, the game itself, you don't really need to aim. Yeah, I'm not it's... sure if I'm making sense. Um, because it doesn't matter if you're shooting from the hip or shooting uh aim down the sides ADS. Mm-hmm. The accuracy is the same. That's stupid. I think that's and that's the problem. I think that that game has it's uh, both third and first person. But who the hell is gonna use first person? There's you don't get to see as much of your surroundings. And yeah. Like you said, if you can shoot from the hip with the exact same accuracy as first person, there's really no point in the first person. It's a loss of sight. So. Yeah, and I really don't mind. I don't mind not having extra accuracy aiming down the sights. Uh, I I feel. I feel letting people shoot from the hip makes the game faster. It's a faster game rather than because you slow down a bunch if you aim down the sights. Yeah. And um but I had trouble if I played Rebels on that assault map, the mm-hmm. snowy planet Hoth. Hoth, yeah. I had trouble seeing where the fucking Imperials were because they were white on white. white. Yeah, that's yeah. the one thing that they seem to have better is the camouflage for that level specifically yeah and the rebels were fucking wearing brown so <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go in a snow area and brown <laughs> but the thing that really pissed me off was the fucking sniper rifle it's um it's able to do 90 damage mm-hmm. your hp is 100 so 90 100, damage so two hits 90 sure. damage to your body a headshot is like a confirmed kill and you so, can shoot this in from your hip uh, this is a loadout, so it's a it's sort of like a uh, it's a card. So using it will have a cooldown of like seven seconds, some sort. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, uh, but you you will rarely have your health up to hundred. So anybody can just shoot your body, and then they'll just get a confirmed kill. So were a lot of people using it. Yep, they were f- yeah. finding vantage points, and then they were just like. Crouching there and sniping people off, so that yeah, was that'll probably so get fun. Yeah, um, and the uh, the assault map was probably the best one. A lot of people mentioned it was uh, said that it was unbalanced, which of course it is because uh, the imperial side had the ATATs and the ATSTs, yeah, it is, yeah. I- including air support, while the yeah. rebels only have air support. Air support, yeah, and yeah. They have stationary turrets, which is easy to destroy, anyways. Exactly. So uh, that's the thing, yeah. though. They're not gonna break the lore, really. For, yeah. For those games, so I mean, it's, it is what it is, right? Yeah. There was an article, I think, on Forbes that mentioned that is actually the strength of playing a Star Wars game. There is supposed to be a imbalance of power because rebels, and you know. Yeah. So, but um. I think Total Biscuit was the one that mentioned this. He he said, if you're gonna do the gameplay like that, you should reward accordingly. So a rebel killing an imperial will get 
should have should get more reward or something That's because true, it's should, it's more I... difficult for them to play it. yeah i agree with that i just don't feel that battlefront will be a 60 dollar game as in so? i don't think it's worth oh it's $60. worth no i don't think so either it, i in all in all honesty it's just the old games just updated graphics Oh, but well, the graphics the really good looking. The graphics, so nice. like, I won't, I will not deny the graphics look good. They look amazing. I mean, that's a frostbite engine for you, but so yeah, sixty dollars. Wasn't there a thing? I think I was reading something saying like, um, the season's pass with Star Wars was like a hundred and twenty dollars. It was like uh, something ridiculous. A hundred and ten. So, oh my god! What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> so yeah, the season pass will cost you will cost you fifty bucks. The game will cost you sixty bucks. That is ridiculous. That is the worst season pass price I've seen in a while. I'm not even sure what is in the season pass. Well, I, I don't think, it's think they're future maps, DLC. right? I think I, they just said future DLC because they said that there was definite DLC already planned for the game before it's even out. I do remember them saying that. Battlefront won't have separate maps as DLCs, so not to divide the uh, player base. And, and that's what I remember were worried about. Mm. With Titanfall, that's what happened with Titanfall. Yeah, Titanfall was such a good game. I feel Titanfall yeah. is such a is a way better game than Battlefront, but yeah. but because of these uh, dividing the players up because of map that's packs what and killed shit. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Battlefront had the to... single player. So I guess yeah, the single cool. player looks pretty good, and you can play yeah. co-op apparently. Yeah, co-op with another guy. Yeah, another person. I think it was, I think it's a two people thing. Yeah. Um, but this uh, the funny thing is there, if you play single player, I think you mostly play the rebels. The other side will have classes. So, so there will be. You don't really cert- play uh, um, you don't play the empire side at all in the story mode. Uh. That I'm not sure, but the beta didn't have that. Mm. They probably have that. I would hope so. Yeah. Especially for a sixty dollar game. Yep. Did you get to uh, play um, uh, as the hero classes like Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker no. at all? No, no. I suck no. at this kind of games. I it's those are power ups if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, which uh, you can get. So there's four slots, right? And the three slots are your loadouts. So grenades, sniper rifle, jetpack, all those kind of stuff that you need to buy with money, and mm-hmm. then the fourth slot are power ups that you can get during the battle. So stuff like vehicles mm-hmm. and turrets are considered power ups, as well as the hero mode. I think I'm not sure how to get that hero mode. I think I'm. Get that. I'm assuming I, I would hope for canon wise, only one person could be a hero at a time on the map, right? For each. Oh side. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> never, I never see. I don't see uh, more than one at okay. a time. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. Yeah, I heard um, there was um, a special power-up you get, uh, which is like uh, the shield. Like oh, shield. yeah. Uh, that one is a loadout, so you can they s- they said that use it all the time. It's really... Um, it's too OP, and the timer on it is too short. So it's really hard to like kill people in gunfights, apparently, in one-on-ones when both people have shields. Mm, I believe... The loadouts have certain slots for certain power ups, so something like you can only choose whether you want the shield or the sniper rifle kind of thing. Okay. I think. Okay. There are like slots or something. So yeah. Uh, Did you go, play with go ahead. Cody? No, I. No. I, don't, did I, I did. I didn't even know he played it. Oh. oh. <laughs> so yeah. Uh. I played it for I think three hours, maybe two, two to three hours. I played it on the PC Origin. I I could only play it on medium. Yeah. I was gonna hard. ask, what's the performance like? Is it very demanding? Very demanding on my CPU. Yeah. Um. Every time I started a match, the CPU will be running at ninety five percent for like two minutes. Jesus. And after that, it will snag stagnate to about sixty five to seventy five. That's fucking high. Yeah, that's really hot. I knew I knew that game was gonna be demanding. I think that's and with the console versions, it's it's very depressing to see what they had to do with the console versions just to make it work. So far, I mean, maybe they might patch it or whatever, but who knows? It's nine hundred p on an Xbox One, right? 
No. Good. The 720p. 720 and 900 for Xbox One and PS4. Mm. That's... And I'm not even sure if that's always 60 or 30 frames per second. Do the consoles have it locked at 30? I would say so, yes. I don't think I've ever seen any game go below 30 on each of the consoles. Hmm. Metal Gear uh, 5 uh, runs on 60. I know that. It drops a little bit if there's too much shit going on, but it's pretty it's pretty smooth and optimized. But I think most people who are going to play Battlefront uh, Star Wars are going to get it for PC just because it's probably easier to optimize. Hopefully. I'm I'm just hoping that the beta was an inefficient build or something. I would say usually most betas are, but who knows? Maybe the whole game is probably done and they're just waiting until November just to sell it. Yeah, maybe. So, yeah, what else? What else have you been trying out? Nothing really. Um, I did buy Mario Maker today, but I haven't played it yet. Finally. I know. I, I was talking to my buddy at work because he's had it for a while. And I'm like, man, I really want Mario Maker, but I just I don't know if I can justify that much money for the game. He's like... 70 bucks, right? 70 bucks. I'm like, that is a lot of money for... Not even a real game game, but... It's cool, because everyone always wanted to make their own Mario level. A game to make a game. A game to make a game and to play other people's game. And I've watched and played some of the games like that people have made, and they're pretty... They're pretty cool. Like, people are pretty creative. Creative, yeah. Fucking like, crazy levels. Like... These people should work for Nintendo sometimes because I think some Mario levels could be like they should just make a Mario side scroller game that's just hard, pure hard, like kind of like what they do with um, the Luigi game that came out a couple of years ago. Somebody made a a suggestion that they should release a half priced a thirty forty dollar game where you just play Mario Maker levels. You can't make them, but you can play the levels. I think that I think that could be possible. Just maybe like, for the three DS or something. Just let uh, that, or just like throw a um, uh, game like that on the Wii Shop channel, and then just sell for half the price, and it'll only be, let you play the games online, but you won't get the build or anything. Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. They should have just done that. I think the whole game should have been just a digital thing. I don't think it needed its own disc, but some people like their uh, software in a hard copy form. Yeah, and soft. And soft copy with um, Nintendo is a bit of a yeah. It's <laughs> mixed bag still. Yeah, exactly. It's very um, it's a pain in the ass. That's all I can say. Mm, so yeah, anything else? No, it's been pretty slow lately. Well, not slow, slow because of work. Because work's been busy. But besides that, like with the holiday weekend, I didn't get the game that much on the holiday weekend. If anything, I was. I caught up on The Walking Dead. I watched Fear of the Walking Dead. All the episodes that were out. I haven't watched the new season yet episode, but some people said it sucks. Some people said it was awesome. So I guess I'll just have to watch it and say it for myself. I'm kind of tired of it too. I think people are just burnt out. I just wanted to end. Whether if it's a good ending or a bad ending. Um, you mentioned about going away for a trip or something. Yep. So when would that be? Um, well, I fly out on the 27th. I'm going to first Toronto, and then I have to head over to British Columbia, and then I have to go head up north. So it's like I take three flights on the, my way there on the 27th, and then when I come back, which is the 12th of November, I just take two flights, uh, which is good because I'll be back on a Thursday, so I'll be able to do that that podcast on that Friday when I get back. November the second week of November ish yeah like the 13th yeah second week second week what what you gonna do there I'm just doing maintenance um there's like um this satellite or I should say antenna system that we have in Massett British Columbia that is used to um well it's used as an antenna obviously and it's not manned by anyone there full time so it has a yearly inspection and I was just chosen to go there and do maintenance on it and it's in a very small town um, you can see Alaska from 
the location so I can see the states technically <laughs> and it's supposed to be kind of cold but more windy windy cold so that's gonna kind of suck and what I have to do there is climb up these antennas or towers that are like 110 feet in the air and then do maintenance of course attached to it so it won't fall or anything but still kind of menacing hmm yeah do you get a hazard ban or whatever <laughs> no I wish there was danger pay for this but no um Maybe if it was like somewhere in a combative zone, but not not in my own backyard, no. The all good thing is though, I do get a lot of TD, which is extra money just to go on this trip. So when I come back, I'll definitely make uh, a little bit more income, which actually might help with my spending of the new games coming out and Christmas nice. shopping because it got to start that soon. Hmm. Okay, so my week, I've played a lot of stuff. Um, What's that? I've I've continued playing uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Did you play How that you one? I like it. No, mm. I never I never played Dragon Age. I have friends that are like addicted to like the whole series. They say it's amazing. I should play it, but that's yeah. I'm uh, I'm probably one of them, I guess. I'm super into Dragon Age, but uh, same comments as last week. A lot of fluff. A lot of a lot of um, side quests that I don't know why I'm doing it. Other than for the fact that I just want to get better as a character, I mean. Okay, well, aren't the side quests that make your life a bit easier for the main quest? Pretty or is much. It just like, okay. I mean, it's not mandatory, it makes really, it, is it? Nah, it makes your life easier in the, in the case of um, getting more perks, kind of thing. Okay. But, uh,. Hmm. The thing is, with me, uh, I'm the type of player that like to uh, finish as many side quests as I can, <laughs> kind of thing. So, <laughs> I've spent twenty hours on the damn thing, and um, <laughs> most of it was side quests. Okay. Fuck, you know. Uh, I I I can safely say that twenty hours. I would say five hours of that would probably be for the story. The other fifteen was for <laughs> side quests. Yeah, I hear it's actually a pretty big game. It so is pretty big, yeah. Do. I actually so, was watching one of my friends play it. It's still a good game if you... Nice. Uh, I still think it's a good game, but I still think the first one is better. Um, I've been playing a game called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Uh, made a couple of videos for this and um, basically what the game is you're a bomb diffuser right and there's actually a manual on bombmanual.com <laughs> bomb manual that, that, that sounds like something the uh, FBI would take a look yeah, at yeah they'd be like what the hell is this what the fuck is this <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, they, they probably did the proper they go through the proper channels, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so one guy will be looking at the monitor. Uh, for optimum play, you're supposed to use a VR headset. But uh, I don't have one. Uh, so one person is supposed to look at the monitor, and as many as three to four people will then have to look at the manual. So the people look at the manual not, are not supposed to look at the screen. Now, of the bomb. When you say don't look at the screen... Does it just show you, like a different viewing, or is it actually basically on the, the screen too? Or the you can, can you the cheat? Technically, you can cheat, but that's not the point of the game. Yeah. So, the only person that launches the game is the bomb diffuser. Okay. So let's say if I'm playing with you, I will turn on the game, and you will have to go to bombmenu.com and choose either the web page version of the manual or the PDF version of the manual, and then I'll need to tell you. How, like stuff like how many wires, what color are the wires, then you have to see like which wire to cut kind of thing. That's actually kind of cool. It is really fun. Um, optimum result is VR because nobody else can see. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you don't have VR, it's fine. You just um, just don't look at the screen. Yeah. Just sit opposite or something. Back yeah, to exactly. back or like behind the monitor or something. It's a really, really fun game. I, I think it's, it was, it's, very, it's a very simple concept. 
so it's yeah it's an indie game uh i've heard about it actually pretty a while back so it was just released about two to three weeks ago okay and it's one of the games that i'm proposing for the game night at my office so that's gonna be fun i hope i think that's a good one to do yeah be- because it's it doesn't really you don't have to be a gamer kind of person to play the game so yeah not really like it sounds like you could kind of even make it into like a board game kind yeah of. pretty much kind of kind of like that that social yeah. experience kind of thing yeah so um um mm, i've also played um i bought a humble bundle Mm-hmm. So the humble bundle is by Capcom. Um, Very good. There is Resident Evil Five. Yeah, that's okay. There's Strider, the new Strider game. Um, there's Lost Planet Three. Uh, I never played the third one. There's the new DMC. Oh, uh, the revamp by- thing. The revamp one, yeah. Yeah. Which I liked, so it's fine. really. Yeah. Holy crap, you're like one of the few people I know who actually liked it. Actually, I don't understand why people don't like it. It's just because they're so used to the other Devil May Cry's. Most of those people. And they they just didn't like the new character. And I don't know. I, I still feel the gameplay was tight and stuff. It, it was, was probably, still a DMC was. kind of a game. Yeah, I, just, I think it all just came down with the character design. There's people were just like, what the hell? You're playing a dude killing... Demons and getting combo counters. Why the fuck do you care? What character do you use? I don't know. People <laughs> are weird sometimes. Like I never got into a Devil May Cry game, so I can't really say if it, if it was a bad game. I mean, if it's like one of those combo hack and slash games, whatever. Uh, it was still a good game, so I, I I don't understand why they hate. Like seriously, it's a freaking good game. <laughs> the gameplay was fucking tight as hell. Yeah. Um, Bionic Commando rearmed. So. And Resident Evil Revelations, the first one. They only give you the episode one for Revelations two and a fifty percent off coupon on Humble Store if you want to buy the rest. Uh, I played Revelations on the three DS when it originally came out. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I've been thinking of getting it, so I don't need to anymore. Yeah, no. Uh, I already have it. On I think the PC. it was really good on the three DS, like graphics wise. It was actually impressive. It, yeah, it's one of the 3DS. earlier. It's one of the earlier good looking games for the three DS, right? Yeah, if I remember correctly, um, so that's the last tier. Fifteen dollars will get you Resident Evil Five DLC bundles and the Ultra Street Fighter Four. So wasn't very interested in that. So I only beat the average. Mm-hmm. So there are more games coming soon. Hopefully Resident Evil Four. As I was just gonna say, figures that they didn't put four there because <laughs> they yeah. know that's the one that most people love. Hopefully it's Resident Evil Four or. Devil May Cry Four, which was re re just released, but probably not. It was just released. Uh, there was like a remake kind of thing, which okay. Oh ex- yeah, yeah, extra yeah. characters and stuff. Yeah. Did you guys get it for the consoles? I want to say yes because it sounds familiar. It's like a more recent. I think it was um, remastered for the newer consoles. I can't remember. Yeah. I honestly can't remember. I just remember it coming back out with what you said. Yeah, I believe the Devil May Cry Four remake have extra characters and stuff, or something.、Mm. You can use multiple characters. Okay. So I've been playing a bit of Lost Planet Three, from the bundle. Is it good? Ha- ha- haven't tried the rest yet. Uh, it's it's giving me a Dead Space kind of vibe. Oh really? Hmm. Uh, maybe Dead Space Three, the more actiony Dead Space. Not、more、really.、Yeah. Not really the horror aspects of it. More action. Because oh you know over the shoulder icy planet, um your character is a bit clunky at times. Did they not? Did they not get to use the max in that one? No no no, you get to use the max. Okay cool. But so far, I've only used the max to travel and not to do anything else. Oh my gosh! I remember, uh, my first Xbox 360 game that I ever got was Lost Planet One, and I thought it was like the coolest shit ever. Just could run around max killing people. And- It is definitely a Capcom game because at the end you get like your super mech, and it was a fun game. A lot of people liked it. Yeah.、Uh, did you guys? Was it was it more of a、uh, non-linear kind of game? Lost Planet, the original. Yeah. 
No, I'd, I'd say it's still pretty linear. Like, mm-hmm. you go from point A to point B. Uh, the one that I really want to play is um, Earth Defense Force. Is it Earth Defense Force? Do you know that one? No, what's that? It's a... Uh, hold on. I'm not. I'm not sure if it's a Capcom game. No, it's not. It's a Japanese game, though. Um, so, third-person shooter, giant insects to kill, kind of thing. Of course. So I like. I like to play games that are swarming kind of games. So, I'm hoping. I don't know. I don't have any idea of a good swarm kind of game. I didn't know what Lost Planet 3 was until I get got into it. I, I think it's okay. Um, the reason I got the bundle was... Was because I wanted to try Lost Planet 3. I wanted to get Strider. And I wanted the DMC. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of hoping... Like how much... I mean like what kind of games they're going to add in later on. Yeah. So... I've also been playing Skyrim... I've seen that. Yeah, so I've I I got it yesterday, and I've played for five hours. I just played it just now before the, before we recorded. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. Really? Yeah, it's not a. Uh, I don't. I don't care about the story. Oh yeah, the story. Whatever. The reason why I got Skyrim was because I like to play games where I can customize my characters. Mm-hmm. And this one you can customize. To your heart's content, right? So mm-hmm. my first character I'm playing is sort of like a fisting character. So I go around <laughs> punching people in the face. Uh, uh, everyone always makes one of those characters. It's just fun to yeah. punch things. Yeah, so I'm following like a guy. I'm following this guy, uh, ESO, on YouTube. So he's popular with making um, videos on Bethesda games like Fallout and Elder Scrolls. Okay. So he gives you guys and builds and shit like that. So I'm following his build on to getting a uh, punching character so i have to use the cat i have to use a cat race khajiit oh khajiit yeah yeah because they have an extra 15 damage for fisting (laughs) for fisting yeah (laughs) for fisting um so uh i've been i've been kind of hooked on skyrim actually are you gonna get mods for it Probably later. I'm not too sure um, what mod. There's so many mods, right? So, and I'm kind of super lot. late into the game. Yeah. So I'm not sure like what mods I'm supposed to get because there is. Um, I know there are st- mods like to make it look, make the game look better. Oh yeah. yeah High res yeah. texture mods and all that. Yeah. Uh, the thing is. If I'm not mistaken, Bethesda also came out with one of their own. So, am I supposed to use? Which one am I supposed to use? <laughs> so I don't, I know. don't know. I never, I never modded Skyrim ever. I thought about it, but I never got around to doing it myself. So yeah, I'm confused as shit, and I, I don't even know whether this high resolution texture pack thing is already installed or not. So I'm it's just not like a drag and drop kind of thing. So I'm just gonna try it later on. I think. Mm. Um. I just like games that let me customize my characters, pretty yeah. much. I think it's fun to play those kind of RPGs. Yeah. Um. Other than that, nothing else. I don't think. Nope. Nothing else. Pretty much Skyrim, Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh man, it's uh, fuck. It's gonna be. <laughs> Taking up <laughs> most of my time, and um, I'll I'll play like the smaller keep talking kind of games or lovers in a dangerous space time, in between. Yeah, but I really really want to get back into my Skyrim. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Once you see it, you're like once people start modding, I have friends that played uh, Skyrim and just with mods, they don't ever play it, just the vanilla version ever again. It's because it looks, you can do so much more stuff with the modding community in Skyrim. Did you, you have it right, Skyrim? I have Skyrim for PC and PS3. How did you like it? I I think it's fun. Like like you said, I don't care about the story, and I think the character customization is a lot of fun. It's not like there's like straight warrior, straight paladin, or 
any of that stuff. I think it's fun. Um, the only thing I probably don't really like about the game is just because of the setting. It's just it's not very colorful. It's yeah, very it's brown and gray. Brown and gray. So it's a little yeah. depressing after a while. But besides that, I think the game's I think the game's okay. I like you Fallout can, better. You can mod in to change the dragons into the My Little Ponies. <laughs> Are you I've serious? seen those. Yeah, I've seen those. Uh, My Little Ponies. I've seen also. Um, what is that British tr- show? Kids show. Uh, Thomas the Train was it? Oh, Thomas the Tank Engine. Ah, yeah. So you can yeah. change the dragons into that too. Oh, that would be scary. <laughs> yeah, that would be scary as fuck. Um. <laughs> so yeah, let's get on with some news. Okay. So the first thing. Um, I was hoping John would be here today, but uh, it's a Magic the Gathering kind of thing. Okay. It is a Magic the Gathering thing. So this person, he's um like a old veteran player, and mm-hmm. he has a binder mm-hmm. of cards worth sixty thousand dollars. Yep. Man. Uh, he went to some sort of uh Magic the Gathering like conference or something, mm-hmm. and he lost his binder. <laughs> Okay, let's rephrase that. I think it got stolen after it got lost. Because anyone who finds a binder of magic cards, I'm not just going to leave it there. It's been stolen now. That sucks. $60,000? I'd be losing my shit. Well, actually, somebody found it. Somebody did oh, found it. He okay. actually, he actually like, dropped it or forgot it at one of the booths or something. Okay. And um, all of this are on, is on Reddit. Um, yeah. Not any news site. So yeah, so the guy found a the sixty k binder and gave it back to him. Wow. So he got back a sixty k binder, and he gave um one 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 card called Glorious Anthem. Okay. So the new guy, he's seventeen and he's just starting out in Magic, right? And mm-hmm. he's saying, "Thank you very much. I really like the card." So somebody else said, "Does it look like this?" If it is, he basically gave you a thousand bucks. The card was worth a thousand bucks. Fucking hell. That's pretty nice of him. I mean, yeah. I, if, if someone found my $60,000 on the ground, I think I can give away a thousand dollars for a yeah. reward. Yeah, so the card he gave away, it seems, is a super, super rare card that's very limited edition. <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, that's cool. Happy ending. Yeah. Uh, wow, I'm actually kind of happy that it's a happy ending. Like, usually the guy's like usually freaking out and it's stolen, but that's good. That's good. Yep. And um, the next one, considered also a happy thing, I guess. So Square Enix, um, they are celebrating 15 years of Deus Ex. 15 years since the first game was launched, or yep. something like that, right? Yeah. Um. So there's actually a fan project where they are remastering the game mm-hmm. with like high resolution textures and stuff. And Square Enix actually said, "Okay, go ahead." That's like, wow! I'm that's like the surprised. first time for anything Square Enix said okay to. Yeah, that's um, wow. <laughs> yep, um, but the next one. It's also a Square Enix thing. And they... So, Dragon Quest Heroes, are you going to get that? No, yeah, I don't like the Dragon Quest games. So, Dragon Quest Heroes is a... um, What is that called? Dynasty Warriors kind of game with Dragon Quest? So, it's like hack and slash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's only for the PS4. Do you have a PS4? No, only Xbox One. Hmm. Okay. So, they are putting a ton of restrictions on streaming. So, they're saying you can stream this game only in non-commercial contexts, meaning no advertising. However, using streams of the game to primarily provide or listen to the music is prohibited, even in non-commercial contexts. So it's like, they're pretty much saying you can't stream anything. Streaming via Twitch is absolutely fine as long as you don't have the music on. What? So, wait, 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 wait. 
You can stream the game, but you can't stream the music that's in the game. Is that what you're saying? A company spokesperson said that. Yeah, streaming via Twitch is absolutely fine as long as you don't have the music on. And the mess, the first message that I read to you about the non-commercial contact stuff, that is actually in the game. As in, when you want to start the game, that's the first message that you see. Why is I don't understand what the hell is wrong with streaming a game. I don't get what's. Who are these dinosaurs that are in charge of these companies? Like seriously, if you stream the game with the music on via Twitch, you could indeed run into a copyright issue. Company spokesperson said, um, but of course there are people streaming on Twitch now, and um, I just think it's funny because they just said okay to Deus Ex fan project, like yeah, well, a while it just ago. Shows what they don't care about really. Yeah, I mean, how do you lose money? If people stream your game, I, I just don't understand. How do you lose money? How do you lose anything if people yeah, stream your no stuff? Yeah, no one, no one watches streams. Okay, I won't say no one. Most people do not watch streams just to see the story of a game and not buy it. Like that's retarded. People I, watch streams for usually the person that's playing or that yeah. they just enjoy the game and they're like, hey, maybe I'm gonna get that game as well just because it looks fun to play. I, Which I has, think that worked. I think there is a misunderstanding with people who don't understand what YouTube or streaming is about. I think yeah. they keep thinking we are watching it only for the game. Yeah. While if I watch a Jim Sterling video or a Total Biscuit video, seventy five percent is because of the person, and only twenty five percent is because of the game. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know what? And it, I think the reason why like all these restrictions happen is because these companies are jealous how this one guy or girl can make a revenue off their game because they are streaming it. I think that's I think that's why they're doing it. Like this is a huge issue of streaming with games. They're just I think that companies are pissed off how their game can make other people make money. Yeah, that's like, another I don't issue. I see any other way. Like what else is there to be angry about? It is free as- advertising. Yeah, it's but just dumb. Technically, you are kind of making money off of somebody else's IP, kind of thing. Yeah, which is also understandable. But uh, I, I don't, I, I can't see a middle ground here. I can't see a middle ground. It's either you let them do it or you don't. Maybe the middle ground is something like what Nintendo is doing, forty percent. Yeah, but but like, why, people why will get pissed off to do that. Why don't all the companies do that? Obviously, there's a lot of companies. Well, I would say most companies don't give a shit about. Whether or not their games get streamed or not, it's always a few, like, redhead stepchild that just wants the friggin'. It's mostly Japanese. Yeah, and that's what it seems like. Like Konami, Square Enix, and um, Nintendo. Maybe their maybe the culture just doesn't understand. Like I don't know if streaming's big over there, but it is here and pretty much every else part of the world. So I don't know if they just see streaming as a bad business piracy. practice or oh. piracy or whatever. I don't know. Like, I have no idea what they're thinking, what streaming is to them. It's not like the people that are streaming are saying, hey, I made this game. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, I just don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure streaming is a big thing too in Japan. But I know that they don't just stream games. Okay. They st- they stream stuff like um people eating and shit, <laughs> or, or is that Korea? <laughs> I'm not being racist know. here, but no, no, I know, but the uh, really like what what's there to watch about people eating? Stuff? Well, yeah, in Korea yeah. you can make a few thousand US dollars a month just by streaming yourself eating. Why? Who's watching this? Who? What? What's the lonely content? people? <laughs> They're is sort of like, like eating like a, with somebody like else. The, like role playing things where like someone's like on the screen like talking to you while eating. I don't know, so and like it's like a special <laughs> site where you can sort of give tips, and that's how you make your money. Okay, so it sounds like, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, it is streaming. That's what streaming basically is. I mean, not all and, streamers ask yeah. for tips, but and um on, and then whenever the guy is eating, the guy who's streaming, he has like a ton of food for that can feed at least five people. And they finish everything by themselves. What the hell? Do these people not eat for like a whole week just so they can stream this one old like 
couple of hours of eating. And the thing is, there are people who are skinny as fuck. They're not fat. They're kind of like normal looking people. I don't. I don't know. That's that's really bizarre. I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> yep. So that's a thing in Korea. I'm not sure if they're doing it in Japan. But uh, Japan also, I believe, stream stuff that is not just gaming. They stream other stuff like eating too. I think. I'm pretty sure they do. Okay. <laughs> Start doing that. <laughs> so yeah. Uh. So everybody's pissed off with um Square Enix, obviously. They're. Mm. But That's I just don't sad. see, like um like Jimmy Kimmel. Do you know the recent thing that he did with the less players? I, I want to say I want to say I did see something about him with let's plays, but I don't know what exactly. So he I was making on YouTube. He was basically making fun of people watching video games, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and so the first episode, one of the episodes he was he was making fun of people watching games on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, that was to coincide with the YouTube gaming launch. So he was saying stuff about it. The next episode, he was reading the YouTube comments. So people were making death threats and all that shit. For fuck's sake, just stop it, gamers! Why are you making death threats to people? It's not exactly yeah. helping our image. Image, yes, I know, and that's the thing. A lot of, uh, sadly, there's a lot of us gamers, and then there's a lot of us retarded gamers who think they're king shit on the internet. Okay, so the the episode after that, um, he got a girl a girl gamer called Missy May or something, and okay. he also got Markiplier onto okay. the app, epi- yeah, to sort of like educate him and stuff. But he was making lame, unfunny jokes. I never found Jimmy Kimmel funny. I'm not sure about you, but I don't think he's yeah. funny. Yeah, so I much prefer Stephen Colbert. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I think he is also another part of the problem. They don't understand that people watch streams or YouTube gaming stuff. It's not just because about the game. Like oh, I can play said. Skyrim on my own, right? Yeah. I don't need to watch another person play Skyrim. But if that guy, if that person is a fucking funny person, or um, do you know recently there's this old lady YouTuber who's Who's playing like Skyrim and shit? No. So yeah, those are interesting people that I would like to watch play games. Yeah. Yeah. Because I watch them more for them more, less than the, not really for the game unless it's a review or something. Yeah. So I think they don't understand that part. So it's the same as why should we watch Jimmy Kimmel? Because we want to watch it for you, right? For those yeah. who like him. Yeah. It's the same fucking thing. I. Just- and that's why I say, like, these dinosaurs don't understand the idea of streaming. It's not about the video games. Yes, it is about them a little bit because people are either excited or there's a fan base or whatever. But it all comes down to the people who stream. We're watching them. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, nah, it's fine, I guess. I don't mind not being understood. Just don't, just don't send death threats where somebody else don't understand. And yeah, like that's that. really like, that's just uncalled that's for. It's not fucking, needed. That's fucking retarded. It just makes you look stupid, people. If you are sending death threats, like we're not barbarians, okay? It's the same with um, Anita Sarkeesian. Oh, so you know how <laughs> I, I'm definitely not a fan of her, um, she, because of many reasons. It's not because I hate women. No. Oh. So that's that's another thing. Just because I don't like her, means I hate women, right? That's that's the message that she wants to send. That's that's her message, yes. So, uh, the reason why I don't like her is because she's an she's a non profit that's getting a lot of money because of all this attention, the Kickstarter stuff. She hasn't fulfilled eighty percent of what she said she was gonna fulfill. She's so, a troll. Yeah, pretty that's much. The way I see it. She's that trolling. was making a ton of money because of people hating her. Yeah, and, and that's uh, why I laugh at these people who actually watch or comment or go on her social media and say stuff. Like, just ignore her. Like, yeah. if no one paid attention to her, she would be nowhere right now. And that's what she gets off of the fuel of all these people that don't really like her. And I mean, and then gamers tend to bully her online, yeah. which is uncalled for. 
You shouldn't be yeah, no one, sending no death threats. You don't. No. You're not supposed to send death threats. You're not supposed to dox the person by, you know, releasing their personal information. This kind of shit. The thing is, she's using all of this as ammo, dumbass. I know. I don't. Are you fucking retarded? Are you? F- yeah. Oh my god. It's Why are bad. you feeding the enemy? I was bullets? watching. What the fuck? Um, I was watching, um, Alpha Omega Sin's video about her. And oh yeah. Just saying the exact same thing that you were saying, like these idiots sending death threats to her. It's like, yep, keep making her infamous because that's what she's gonna use for her fuel. You see, even we're talking about her on the show. Yeah. Fucking I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, I don't want her to bad. die or something. I just don't. Yeah, exactly. I just don't agree no, with the things I don't that agree she's with doing. She says no. Yeah, and the thing is, she is using all of this as ammo to further. To further her gains, kind of thing. Her she's, agenda. She's go yeah. She's going to the the UN and talking about cyberbullying against. That's embarrassing. Against... Does the yeah. UN have nothing else better to do? Like, oh, <laughs> I think the UN is a total fucking joke. Oh, seriously, it is, it is a yeah. joke. Like, I don't think it the UN works as well as everyone. I don't think the does. UN is means anything at all. Um. So yeah, and the UN is also it also has corrupted people like um that guy what's his name uh i believe he was like the head of some of the one of the un programs i think the ch- the children program or something maybe <laughs> he was children program and he's corrupt that's nice <laughs> yeah he was caught taking a lot of money like Embezzling. hundreds of thousands if not millions yeah so yeah well, uh the, the the problem i have is she's using this ammo to 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 further her cyberbullying against women message. The thing is, cyberbullying is not just a woman problem. No, it's everyone. But she's but she's making it to be like that. And that's why I call her a troll because I know she knows that's not the case. There's no Seriously, one in this yeah. world that believes that that only women are targeted for bullying. That's impossible. <laughs> you see, all always on the news of little kids committing suicide boy or girl or whatever even adults like it's not just a woman problem and that's why like i just want to I, I just want to ask her like what are you hoping to achieve in the end like what is yeah. your main goal here and i bet you she still wouldn't have a complete answer she would so, say something off and actually if you look it up in a lot of countries males have a higher rate of suicide yeah yeah it's yeah. true actually in canada males commit suicide more than females i know that Perfect. So this is definitely not a woman problem. No, it's a it's everybody, everybody problem. Guy. Yeah, exactly. Like what the fuck? Why are you? Why are you being That's... sexist? Pretty much. Why are you? And I don't even know if she's being sexist. Oh, she is being sexist, but I don't think she's doing it on accident. I think she, I honestly think she's trolling, like for all this. Social and she's media. making a lot of money. Yeah, she is, and there's a lot of stupid followers. And like, um, I just don't understand. I follow this guy on YouTube called Review Tech USA. Oh yeah, he's awesome. Oh yeah, so he he like to talk. He likes to talk a lot about this kind of issues as oh, well, yeah. in in video games, right? Yep. And he mentioned something about Anita having a few hundred thousand this year. She made a few hundred thousand this year, and okay. the thing is, because she's a non profit, she's supposed to declare, and she's technically not supposed to have any profits, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so he said. There is two kinds of non-profit in America, at least. Uh, one type is the normal type where you're not supposed to have profits. You're supposed to use up all the money that you that you get mm-hmm. from donations. Another one is a non-profit that can put in money into the first one kind of non-profit. So okay, if okay. she change, if she changes her organization to be the second one that can sort of fund another non-profit, she doesn't have to declare shit. Okay. So yeah. So if you want to make good money, do charity, do non-profit NGO shit. It's a good <laughs> business to get into. Yep. So yeah, only women get bullied online. Yeah, apparently. If, if you're a dude, that's you got it made. If you're a chick, do yeah. not go on the internet. You will get bullied. <laughs> if you're a dude that's played any of the competitive game, you've never been called a cunt or asked to be, you know, or no. yeah. You know what I mean. We're all bros. We're all bros, right? (laughs) Yep. Fist bump. (laughs) So, yeah. Um, Okay, this next one, I'm not sure if I'm excited for it or am I going to be sad for it. Okay. So, um, did you watch the new Godzilla movie? The latest one? 
Yes, I liked it. Yes, I liked it too. Not because it was a good movie, but because I'm desperate for a Godzilla movie. A good Godzilla movie. Yeah, and this yeah. one was pretty decent. Mm-hmm. The only problem I had was there was too many fucking humans. Yeah, like I don't I care. Actually said that in the movie. I'm I like, just want to I see Godzilla care. wreck shit. Yeah, and then Nakumura is like, "Oh, let them fight." Yes, for finally fucking sex. Just <laughs> let them fight. Yeah. What was that like? The last like fifteen minutes of the movie. Yeah, I mean. Have you watched any of the uh, Japanese Godzilla movies? I've watched a couple of the old ones, yeah. Yeah, my favorite is the uh, Godzilla versus the Three-Headed Dragon one. That's my favorite. Uh, the Three-Headed Dragon definitely is my favorite villain in yeah. Godzilla movies. Yeah. And that one, the Japanese like, fuck you humans, we're just going to show the monsters going at it. And it was so good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Legendary and Warner Brothers Pictures. Yeah has announced a cinematic franchise uniting Godzilla and King Kong and other iconic giant monsters. Are you serious? Yep. So the initial trio of films will be 2017's Kong Skull Island. So I'm not okay. sure if this is going to be a reboot of the Jack Black one, which was pretty shit. Yeah, um, that was bleh. Yeah. The second movie will be Godzilla 2 in 2018. Yeah. And then yeah. the next one will be Godzilla vs. Kong in 2020. Isn't Godzilla technically bigger than King Kong, though? I'm not too sure. They they will probably make King Kong super huge or something. Yeah, they'll probably be like another yeah, but like with other like giant monsters, like what other giant monsters can I think of that could take on those two? The like, thing is, I'm super excited for it. I love kaiju movies. It's yeah. just that I know I have to go through one and a half. One and a half to two hours of fucking people talking to talking. get my fifteen minutes of Godzilla vs Kong. Yeah, and they'll probably they'll probably choose another wise looking middle aged to fifty year old actor like Nakamura to say let them fight yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> you know what's the secret to make a good kaiju movie? What's that? Show the fucking kaiju on screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not difficult. <laughs> Just show the fucking kaijus on uh, screen. It's well, that's North American production for you. They have to. F- we and that was the reason why stuff. the first Godzilla movie is tanked, right? There was a um, lot of bullshit stories about humans too. Are you talking about the, um, like the very old ones? Or are you talking about that? The nineteen ninety nine one. Oh god! The one that uh, Godzilla Matthew, attacked New York or something with um, what's his name? Yep, yep. That's oh, it. that movie is so. Ugh. I hate it. It's, it has nothing to do with Godzilla, except for what it's called, Godzilla. It and Godzilla like was Godzilla. more of a dinosaur. Yeah, a t- like a deformed T-Rex with a flat head. Like, <laughs> and then there yeah. was like raptors at the end that were like supposed to be baby god. Like, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, um, so that's why I really like the new one. At least it looked like Godzilla. <laughs> It acted like Godzilla with like the yeah. whole powering up thing that shot the yeah and fire the, breath thing yeah and the sound effects it sounded like Godzilla and yep. the, and like you said the end one where he just fire breath into the other monster's mouth that was fucking epic as shit that was so cool he like spoilers but when he opened his mouth it's like it looked like he was gonna puke in his mouth but it was so cool that scene almost made the movie worth it almost yeah, yeah. They did a very good job with the fighting at the end with the monsters. Yeah. Um, I didn't like, I didn't like the flying monster designs actually. Like those bat things. Yeah, it looked, it looked like a metallic battleship kind of thing. I don't know, like a metallic flying bomber. I don't know. It yeah, just looks it, weird. It, it it was kind of weird, but at least it was kind of creative. I mean, they could have been yeah. just lame and just done like moth. Another dinosaur. Like a giant oh. moth. Or yeah, <laughs> another giant moth. dinosaur. Like. At least they got a little creative, but yeah. Hopefully, like the next one will have more iconic type monsters. Yeah. I like Mecha Godzilla. Oh sweet. fuck! That, 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 and that's why I like the Japanese ones because um, they tend to have more than one. Yeah, most of the times. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, a lot of the old uh, movies even had like three way battles and stuff. And the last Godzilla movie. Um, had like a bunch of them All the villains And all the uh, allies of Godzilla came back Yeah Oh Nathan's Nathan's at the hospital What? Is he okay? I'm not sure I'm gonna ask him now 
hopefully he's there for someone else. But yeah. Geez. Which is not exactly a good thing, but yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want anyone in the hospital unless it's just yeah. for a checkup. So, yeah. So, King Kong versus Godzilla. Godzilla yes. win. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, that's uh, that's a, how a, I see a, it. A monkey versus a fire breathing dinosaur. I mean, God's. Do- I mean, not God's. Do- King Kong did kick ass, like those two T Rexes. But, I mean, they, those two T Rexes did. Is King Kong up. the original movie monster? Does I know his movie came out in the nineteen thirties or something, right? Yeah, and I don't think Godzilla like first, had one. Then Godzilla started like nineteen fifties, sixties. Hmm. I think I think you're right. I think King Kong came first, and that's probably what inspired Toho to do all those Godzilla movies. Could be wrong though. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, cut. Uh, Godzilla started in uh, 1954. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure King Kong started in the 30s. Yeah, King Kong I think predates that. So, but I really hated the the Peter Jackson movie. It was just. I want to like it. Three hours Peter of Jackson. fluff. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. It was weird. Like it was like watching a fever dream. <laughs> it was just I just couldn't get into it. Like I think they tried to make it too epic, with yeah yeah Peter Jackson but, right. Yeah, he goes big or go home. I mean, right? you don't need to try hard to be epic. You have a fucking giant gorilla kind of thing. <laughs> I think that's pretty epic as it is. Yeah, just send an. Just send other big monsters at him and then fight, you know? Fight. Let them fight. Yeah. Yep. So, <clears throat> the next one is... um, It's about digital uh, digital content. So, recently, um, the iOS got a huge update for their phones and maybe their iPads as well. Okay. And it sort of broke a lot of video games. And this is not the first time. I a lot of iOS updates k- tend to break apps, mm-hmm. and then the software developers will need to rework their app to make it work with the new OS, right? Yeah, so that's um, like the norm, most of the time. So the f- the fucked up thing is, a lot of games that broke were games like um, they're considered premium kind of games, okay. on um, on uh, what you call that iOS. So games mm-hmm. like um, Ghost Trick, Phantom Detective, or Bioshock. It's like ten, fifteen dollar games. Even Monster Hunter, they actually they actually have a Monster Hunter game, Monster Hunter Freedom United. So and Dead oh, Space, sure. yeah, those uh, are yeah, just I some of the Dead Space. yeah. So those are just some of the more well known mm-hmm. games on the on in this topic. So instead of reworking the game to make it work on the iOS, they just Got rid of it from the shop. Uh, what about all those people? That, oh my god! Basically, all what that is, money went what, down the drain. Their message to their customers is "fuck you." We don't give a fuck. We they took your money and fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. And basically, fuck you to iOS because we're not gonna work with your shit, obviously, because we're too damn lazy. So people, so people are pissed off. I would be. Pay fifteen dollars for a game. I can use or even get off the store even if I went back on my old iOS software that sucks yep so the only way to keep the games is not to update your iOS and yeah. to not delete the games off your machine yeah because you won't even be able to get the game even if you do have the old iOS and the thing <laughs> is there is a um, so the article I'm reading the 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 uh, EULA the whatever mm-hmm. user licensing agreement basically said, basically says something like, "We have the right to take it away." Pretty much, <laughs> we we have the right to take away the thing that you bought. Wow. And it's so a snip. Where's it's my a, money? <laughs> it's actually a snippet of a of Rockstar Games, a lengthy EULA. So technically, Rockstar can take away the copy of GTA Five that I bought because I bought it digitally. So okay, it's kind of weird, but okay. So, so that's the thing, I'm, I'm almost hundred percent digital right now, and it's fucking freaking me out. Yeah, Can you imagine Steam doing this shit? 
Oh my god, you open up your Steam library and half of it's like gone. My for 300 games gone? I'm gonna fucking murder someone. <laughs> Game! I think, so, if, yeah. I think if Steam was... Like, if that was to happen with all their games, I think Steam wouldn't even allow those games on there because they wouldn't want the, that kind of reputation of people just... Companies taking back their games for whatever reason. I'm just surprised that iOS even lets that happen. Like, if, yeah, I, was I, mean, if, I, if I was Apple, I would be like, listen... You're going to take these games away from the people, you got to give them back their money. Yep. Some kind of credit. Or else you're you're staying off the store forever. So pretty much, um, nobody's getting a refund and you're not getting the games that you bought. And you can't actually do anything about it. No, I guess all you can do is suck it up, buttercup. The thing is, uh, Apple also has a similar EULA. So they're pretty much in on it together with the uh, game companies. Um, you know what though who the hell really not to like insult apple users who plays games on apple stuff i mean i don't play mobile games but i guess if you if you have a three thousand not three thousand uh uh one thousand what eight hundred dollar iphone yeah it's pretty expensive you, you would wanna i don't know get your money's worth i suppose i suppose yeah and you are aren't just paying for a phone i mean it is a multimedia device yeah if you can't play games on it then what the hell yeah and uh and nathan say it's his granddad getting his surgery and everything is okay okay good yeah that's good so yeah uh this is really disturbing <laughs> so i can spend money on digital stores and they have the right to take it away from me if i buy physical games I can pretty much keep it forever as long as they work, right? Yeah. So, yeah. This is kind of fucked up. Yeah, wait wait uh, until, like, everything goes digital eventually. <laughs> like, uh, I don't... I don't understand how game companies can get away with this kind of thing. I feel like game companies... I feel the gaming industry and the companies involved in the gaming industry screws over their customers way more than any other industry combined. Yeah, I agree. I just have a feeling <laughs> that they can get away with a ton of shit. Especially in the media uh, industry, like like TV shows, movies, music, um, whatever you say. Like Those things don't really screw people over. Like <laughs> You don't buy music and they're like, oh, we're going to take it back, whatever. I mean, no one... Yeah, you buy really music buys and then music. you listen to it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Or you go to the movie and you watch it. I mean... What the hell, man? Like, what? It, it does seem like the game can, industry can you, has can a you lot of backdoor stuff. Can you can you imagine buying the ticket and then walking in? <laughs> Sorry, sir, you're yeah. not gonna watch the movie. Sorry, sir, you can't watch this movie anymore. Back away, sir, slowly. <laughs> yeah, we have no Stop. reason to take this from you, but you need to leave. <laughs> I don't understand how game companies can get away with this kind of shit. Well, maybe they need to revise on the game industry and its policies with this kind of because thing. it's they, technically they it's pretty young policies. Yeah. It's the same with um, the recent um, development with um, the FTC and YouTube stuff. Okay. So um, I mentioned this in one of the early uh, one of the episodes, like a few weeks back. But basically, Machinima got a deal from Microsoft to say good things about the Xbox One. Oh so yeah. So yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, sponsored content, right? So Machinima is a network with a bunch of YouTubers under them. So what they did was they asked the YouTubers to make sponsored content for Microsoft and Xbox One, but not tell the viewers that it's sponsored content. Yeah, it's hard to do. So and, FD's, and, and yeah. it's funny too because you can tell in some of the YouTubers' videos, like like you see in the comment section, sell out, sell out. <laughs> like you don't do. Like what the hell is this sell out? Like it's obvious with some of them, but yeah, it's hard to not even tell. Like it's sponsored video. And um, I have no problems with sponsored stuff. I don't care either. I mean, that's how these YouTubers make their money, right? Like, yeah, if you want the content, the YouTuber needs to eat, right? Exactly. That's how it works, people. That's how the internet stays free. Thank God. A advertising and sponsored content, that's how it stays free. If you want everything to be no ads and no sponsored content, then you have to pay for shit. Yeah, we'll, so we'll you start, have we'll, they'll turn YouTube into the next Netflix, and you'll have to pay eight dollars a month just to scroll around in YouTube. <laughs> it's either or, okay? Yeah. It's either or. Yeah. Um. Pretty much. 
pretty much. And um, so FTC sued Machinima for thirty thousand dollars. And recently, there's a lot of YouTubers coming out with more sponsored content because now they know they have to say it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's also a very very young industry. YouTube started in what two thousand five. Yeah, I remember when it first came out. Oh, video games, old. video games are what thirty years old. So it's like. It's very it's, young. It's young. We really need to look at the policies. Yeah, they might need to be, uh, you know, structured. Tell people that you sponsor content. Tell people that you um try not to take away the games that people buy with their money, kind of yeah. stuff. You know, yeah, simple stuff true. like that. Yeah. It's uh, okay. Ah, <sighs> so moving on to the next one. This one is a bit funny, stupid and funny. So it's not as um infuriating as the last one. Okay. So, uh, do you know the website called VG Two, Twenty Four Seven? No. So they're a video gaming website. They're pretty well known. Okay. Um, I used to read them quite a bit. Um, they went to Tokyo Game Show, right? Okay. So every fucking thing is in Japanese, and um, they wrote a they wrote a uh, article mm-hmm. about Uncharted Four. And the articles, the article said, um, "Is it too formulaic? Because you know, Uncharted, the Uncharted games, kind of, you know, same formula every game, right? Yeah. So, so it's sort of like a first impression of Uncharted Four, the new game, A Thief's End, that's gonna come out for the PS4. Yeah. But what they didn't know was, the game that they played at Tokyo Game Show wasn't Uncharted Four, but it was the uh, re-released version of Uncharted Two. Oh, was that with the Nathan Drake collection? Yeah, the the new Uncharted collection. I think one, two, yeah. three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I've seen that in stores. So that one's not out yet. So they were they were setting it up in Tokyo Game Show to let people play. Mm-hmm. So they were playing Uncharted two, and he thought he was playing Uncharted four. That's a little embarrassing. That's fucking funny as shit. Um, Just get their facts straight first before they finish uh, posting stuff. So, I think I think the article was brought down within a day or something, and then they apologized to Naughty Dog. Um, yeah. Uh, we didn't realize it at the time. What we played was Uncharted Four, but the remaster Uncharted Two. Um, yeah. TGS is busy, and obviously the majority of the signage isn't in English. But none of that excuses the fact that we seriously fucked up. <laughs> So Uncharted Four director Neil Druckmann, he sort of like made fun of the whole situation a bit. He tweeted a picture of a new Uncharted Four screenshot showing of the rope mechanic, but the game screenshot is actually the game of um, you know that old super old game of that guy you have to swing above like holes on the ground. Oh um, what's it called? I know what you're talking about. Jungle Hunt? No. Something yeah, like something that. like that. Something you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah, it, it was a it was a funny thing. Well, so, at least they joked around about it too. Instead yeah, it's, of like getting pissed it, off. Instead of like you know Uncharted being pissed off and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's funny. Yeah. Um, Pitfall, Pitfall, Pitfall. That's right. Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Oh man, fucking yeah. classic. And they're a super Pitfall for NES. And fucking difficult. Um, yeah. for me, anyways. It's a hard uh, game. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but the thing is, I was reading this on Kotaku, and I was thinking, hmm, it's not like Kotaku haven't made a mistake before. <laughs> 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 but at least that's how they started it out. Yeah. Basically, they say video game websites like all news outlets screw things up all the time. Lord knows we have. So at least they know they're not perfect too. Yeah. Well, so no yeah. one, no one should ever claim themselves as perfect. If anyone yeah. can admit a mistake, you can be easily forgiven. That's yeah. how I see it. Okay, um, I guess this is the last one. Okay. Nothing much after that. It's been a pretty slow week, actually. Um, this one, you will get pissed off in the beginning and then maybe not so pissed off at the end, right? Okay. Ubisoft. Okay, so Ubisoft. Oh, yeah, these guys. <laughs> yeah, these guys. Um, what they did. So they recently released Heroes of Might and Magic 7. Yep. So that's okay. the newest one. Yeah. Um, it's really really shit. Okay, so the game is really shit. Okay. It's probably a cash grab. 
I I I can picture the boardroom people in suits sitting around and saying, <laughs> "We don't want to spend time and money on this shit, but there's a lot of fans wanting the game. Let's just make something quick and get their money and then run away, kind of shit, right?" Yeah, yeah. So the game is shit, but that's not the point of the uh, of what I'm gonna say. Okay. So they was also selling a collector's limited edition mm-hmm. of Mighty Magic Mighty Magic Heroes Seven. Um. So in the limited edition, collector's edition, if you take a look at the uh, at the picture of it, of the promo, the promo stuff that they were doing for the limited edition, you will see a bunch of stuff. I believe like a, a deck of cars, maybe an action figure, those kind of stuff, right? The, okay. the the usual things you get in collector's edition. Yeah, yeah. And but one of the things was was also a physical PC DVD of the game. Okay. So guess what didn't come in the collector's edition once people ordered it? The actual game. You get you got a key for Steam. Yeah. Or is it you you play? I believe it's you play. You basically you, you got a key for one of the digital stores, right? So basically, their physical copy was a piece of paper. Yeah. The thing is, in the pictures, there there are it's pictures of the actual PC DVD. Oh, so they, oh wow! So false yeah, advertising. Cool. Yeah, that is false. That's just they did that on purpose. There's no so, mistake. The weird thing is, the Europeans got the physical DVDs. The Americans didn't get any. Like fuck you, Americans. Fuck you. Wow, that's wow. Yep. I wow. Get, you know what right? probably happened? They probably just didn't make enough, and they're like, well, let's just mail ship them all to one region, so we don't have to spend as much money, and then we'll just send them all up to Europe. And then we'll just give everyone else piece of paper. And the packaging wasn't even changed. You can actually see the space that was gonna have the PC DVD in, but it's just empty. <laughs> Can you imagine the people's reactions when they first opened and like, "What the hell? Where's my desk?" So, so in the beginning, a lot of people were asking for refunds, and Ubisoft mm-hmm. say, Ubisoft basically said in their French accent, "Fuck you," you know, like "fuck uh... you." <laughs> I know, I know, I did an Italian accent, but whatever. What, what, fuck you, saying. <laughs> Europeans, right? So fuck you, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but now they're they're saying, okay, we're gonna offer refunds. Yeah. Why would you piss off consumers? Like, that's like one of the worst business practices you can do. And it's not even off. it's not it's not like the game is even good. Good. So yeah, it's like people probably would have want their money back anyways because it's probably shit. So. It's not like it would have been a surprise anyways. Oh, man. It's... Again, I'm going to ask the same question. How do game companies get away with this shit? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, th- There needs to be like a gaming policy. Like, whole thing needs to be redone. Like, with products, consumerism, streaming. Like, it just needs to be all revamped. So people can't do these shady things without being punished. Oh man, it's a uh, fucking. I don't know. It's ah uh, fuck 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 all these game companies. They make they make stuff that we love, but seriously, fuck them. I know it's just too bad we guess Well, we could, but we're just not as good at creating that kind of stuff that they do. We do not have the tools or the means to do so. Yeah, and I do want my triple A stuff. Like seriously, I yeah. really do want. I do want my Skyrims and my Shadow of Mordor and stuff. Hmm. Uh. That's the thing. It's like we have no other choice, right? It's like you gotta like, it's like you gotta go on like one of those game shows where you have to like crawl through mud and shit. But if you win at the end, you get the prize. <laughs> That's what a triple A game is. You gotta deal with all the crap just to get it, right? So pretty much. Um, while indie, di- while like indie games nowadays are like, like these like Greenpeace charity people who are like, here, here's our games, and we're not gonna screw you over here. We want feedback. <laughs> that's the way I see I see like like the AAA guys are like these big mean businessmen while like the indie developers are like these like low key regular type people are just like yeah just play your game oh man it's uh fuck fuck off just fuck. but I still it's, want your it's, games it's frustrating still want yeah games. we want your games but why do you make us suffer Um, the gaming industry is definitely I think the consumers are probably the most passionate about it Oh yeah, I would say so. 
So yeah, I think that's I think that's one of the reasons why they can screw us over. They can do as much shit. They can, f- they can shove up their face as much as they want into our asses, but we're still. We're still gonna buy. Thank it. you, yeah. thank you, thank you for your face on my ass. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. It's true though. Like until like a point in time, we're gamers, and some devs put down their foot to these kind of things. It'll it'll continue to happen. And it'll it'll just be the norm still. So. Okay, one last thing, which I forgot. So one more last thing. Okay. And we're done with news, right? So have you played Payday Two before? I've never played a Payday game. Okay, so. In Payday Two, when you sort of complete a heist, mm-hmm. you get you know your your payday, your money, and your experience. But at the end, you also have like a gambling thing where you choose a card, and then the card will give you a reward. So, um, the Payday Two developers came up with this like special event for like uh two, two I think two two to three weeks or something. Okay. So there's a lot of challenges for you to do. So like killing people with a certain weapon, and it's a community thing, right? Everybody has to yeah. do it because the numbers are like in millions. <laughs> so it's like, and one of them is also about the cards and all that. You have to get like five million cards or something. So. The community managed to do all of that, so they released a huge ass patch. I downloaded it the other day. I think it was like two gigabytes. Okay. Or was it five gigabytes? I know it's fucking huge. So the patch, basically, if you finish all the challenges, the community will get free content, pretty much. That's so, cool. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, they basically said on their website free content if you finish the challenges. So I was wondering what the fuck this is. I didn't know about it, mm-hmm. so when I knew about it, it was pretty much over, and everybody already done it. So I downloaded the update. I went into um my payday to and I played the heist, right? So I was like, mm, everything seems normal. I finished the heist, and then I reached the cards part. So I chose a card, mm-hmm. and I won one of the rewards that they gave to us for free, right? Okay. So the reward is a safe. So I was like, oh. This is fucking cool. I'm gonna try to open the safe. Guess what I needed to fucking open the safe. No, no, no. Just, just say it. Just say it. You had to buy a fucking key, didn't you? Pretty much. That is some bullshit. That's not free. <laughs> Basically, free they're H1 giving H1 us free, free microtransactions. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that is so stupid. That's not free. Every everybody's pissed off, obviously. <laughs> Because they were grinding this shit, man. Yeah. On Reddit threads, people are like giving each other pep talks. We can do it. We can do it. This kind of shit. It was really cool. Like, yeah, it's cool. And then the they give us this shit. Together. Yeah, yeah. And then you're all like, oh, well, that's fucking useless. So I had that's to pay so money. Um, I had to pay how, something like. How much like did they three... charge for a key? Um, I'm just gonna give my original equivalent. It's about three dollars. Okay. okay. So three dollars a key. That's not yeah. exactly very cheap if you have tons of safes. No, it's the same thing uh, with H one Z one. You can be in a well in a um, actual server world where you build stuff, or you can do Battle royale, and they'll you'll sometimes just sit, get random crates in your inventory for free. But of course, you need the keys, and to get the keys, you have to buy them. But you can also buy the crates if you don't ever get them. But you, you you tend to get them for free. But that's funny. That's not free. You have to pay like that much for a key to open up something that is supposedly free. No, it's not free. That's oh, and the uh, and the rewards in in the safe are also random. So you might get something shitty, anyways. Um, I'm not sure if it's shitty or not, but pretty much there's like a huge list, and then you might get one of the item that's in the list. Okay, so it's like um, yeah, it's like H1 or uh, Counter Strike Go. With its uh, cases, tells you what's in the cases, and you have a chance of winning one of those things. The thing with Payday Two is they're they're pretty much an indie company, mm-hmm. um, and they have maintained the servers for like four fucking years. And Payday Two has never had microtransactions before. They had a ton of DLCs, a mm-hmm. lot of lot of DLCs. And those DLCs are, of course, is just to maintain the servers, right? You need money to maintain the shit. 
I don't mind them putting microtransactions in. Just don't tell me it's free. Yeah. Just Because like, I understand the financial part. You need money to you know maintain, pay salaries, yeah. maintain the servers. But just don't tell me it's free for fucking all. Maybe they're just, maybe they just don't know how to ask money from the community because they need money to like make these servers work. Maybe they're just like uh, maybe we do these micro transactions, they won't get pissed at us instead of like saying, "Look, guys, we gotta like start charging for servers or whatever." This might be just their way of doing it indirectly without feeling too bad <laughs> but pissing people off at the same time yeah so yeah a lot of shitty news this week yeah oh actually did you um see that thing i'm not sure if it was if it's real or not a lot of people are saying it's not but it's still interesting nonetheless but there was a a prototype of the super sony playstation what do you remember back in the 90s when sony and nintendo oh yeah yeah building yeah. the cd yeah uh, attachment for the super nes oh yeah Apparently, i think i know what you're talking about has a production model a testing model that is actually sony and nintendo collaborating on a console yeah with, like the actual console Now people are saying this is fake. Some people are saying it could possibly be real, but I think that's really cool. How, like, if someone actually made it, like, how much work they put into it, and if it is real, how much do you think something like that would go for? Considering how, it's a, like, who would own it? It's not owned by Sony or Nintendo, right? Like, who yeah. would get rights to it? Fifty fifty. Yeah, and how much would it be worth? And is is it's just very interesting because it it's popping up everywhere on. Uh, YouTube and other uh, social media sites, and I'm not sure if it's real or not, but I think it was really cool to see if that's what it would have turned out to be. Yeah. So, um, just to just to wrap this up, um, just really quick, some new game releases on Steam. So, um, Bro Force is finally out of early access. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty fun game. I'm not sure what they added out of early access, but it is pretty fun. It's it's not a it's it's not a it's not a sit down for five hours kind of game. It's a pick up and play very That's quick what it seems burst. Like. Yeah, yeah. But it is pretty cool. Um, it's definitely fun playing with people too. It seemed like it'd be better as a co op. Oh yeah, and um. There's a new one called uh, Mushroom Eleven. Okay. So it's actually sort of like a puzzle kind of game where you have to navigate an organism across obstacles. Okay. So you use your mouse to push the organisms, and you have to either split it up or push it through crevices, kind of thing. Because oh, it's like a. Oh yes. Okay, I remember seeing um, early videos of that. Actually, it actually looks pretty interesting. It looks yeah. It really look, looks really cool. It it could be the next big indie puzzle game. Yeah. The concept alone is pretty cool. Yeah, like you sp- use your mouse to spread the stuff all yeah. around. And yeah. Yeah, because it's an areas. amorphous organism, right? It has no yeah. shape. It takes the shape of whatever is in or whatever. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. It's really cool looking. I I didn't even know about this game. I just saw yeah, a trailer somewhere. I remember somewhere. watching that trailer like a long time ago. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I never heard anything until you just talked about it now. Yeah. So I think if you like indie, if you like puzzle games, basically check check it out. I think it's it looks really cool. I'm probably get it sooner or later. Yeah. Uh, um. The next one is called Relief. Relief. R E L I V E. Um. It's a free sci-fi adventure game about CPR. CPR. Yeah, its main purpose is to increase awareness about the topic and encourage people to take a CPR class. Well, if there's one thing people should probably take, it is CPR. CPR. Yeah, it's very important. And the aesthetics r- look really good. It has the cell shaded Borderlands look. The cell shaded oh. Telltale Borderlands look. Yeah, I like I like that look. Yeah, the characters with those very hard black lines, those kind yeah. of thing. It, it looks really Comic good. Comic book style. I'll probably check this out. It's free, anyways. Okay, so yeah, R E L I V E, play that and learn CPR. <laughs> um, 
Next one, Minecraft Story Mode, Telltale Game Series. It's first episode is finally out. Yep. I, I think it's I think it's the first episode. Uh, doesn't seem episodic. It's a Telltale game, probably episodic. I'm it's not too episodic. sure. Um, so Nathan and Jonathan is doing a series on this actually, so Nathan thought, will be playing. I thought, you know? uh, John didn't want to play it until like all the episodes were out. Yeah, but because Nathan is playing it, so you thought, ah, fuck it. Yeah, fair enough. So do that will be on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash ultra podcast. Do like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, did you play a game called Little Inferno? No, I haven't even heard of that. So it's a game where you you're at like a fireplace, and then you have to choose what things to burn. Yeah, it sounds it sounds simple, but it has like a backstory and stuff to it. It's a pretty cool really? indie game. Yeah. So the makers of that is uh, made uh, just came out with a new game called Human Resource Machine. Human Resource Machine. So it's like those simulations, okay, puzzle puzzle simulation kind of game. Okay. Looks cool. I'm definitely gonna get it because I really liked Little Inferno, and they and they continued with their similar aesthetic look to the game. Okay. So when I first saw it, I'm like, "Why does this look like Little Inferno?" <laughs> and I checked it out, checked the developer. Oh yeah, same people. Same people. Yeah. Okay. So the last one, the last the last one is called Planet Base. It's an indie city builder survival simulation thing. So guide a group of space settlers trying to establish an outpost on a remote planet, grow food, collect energy, mine resources, manufacture bots, and build a fully self-sufficient colony. It looks really cool. Hmm. And it's about how much is it? Eighteen, twenty dollars? It's fifteen percent off right now. Okay. Uh, I saw an article. It says it's tough as balls, though. Oh, it's one of those games where you're gonna get screwed at the beginning. <laughs> Probably, it looks nice. It has a very clean, smooth aesthetic to it. I really like it. Okay. So I guess if you like space building, as uh, space building, if you like city building, and you like space, take a look at this planet base. So yeah, that's the end of new game releases. So what are you looking forward to? Playing your Mario Maker? Yes, I'm gonna play Mario Maker and get probably frustrated with people's retardedly hard levels. Uh, try rem- to make some levels. Remember to play it every day to unlock the nine oh. stuff. It, you have to do it like nine days or something. Yeah, that sucks. But wait, I, I mainly got it for just to play other people's levels. But yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, that's an like expensive game to buy, man. I know, I know, but I do love my side-scrolling Mario games, and if they can make it harder, I'm all down for it. That's why yeah. it was really hard for me to choose whether to buy it or not. I just crashed. I've seen a lot of the levels. It's fucking crazy. You have to pick up that um. What is that? Um, the thing with the P, like a. Oh, the the, I know what you're talking about the power block. Yeah, you have to pick that up, uh, jump and then throw it away. Uh, throw it against the wall and then jump off Pounce of it. Off I'm of like it. fucking yeah. crazy. And man. then it like turns coins into like bricks so you can run across the next part. Yeah. Who makes? And you know what's crazy? You cannot upload levels unless you the creator can beat it at least once. Oh. So you can't fucking make levels and be like, all right, try to beat it. And so you mean all this, all the stupid looking levels? People have beaten it. Like the creator has beaten it at wow. least once. You have to be at least once to upload it. <laughs> I've seen one where that is just a flat land, and then all the bosses in one side, and you're on the other side. <laughs> He must have How the fuck did he be dead? He probably like jumped right at the right time in between all of them and just got through. Like I don't know how else he'd be able to do it. It's fucking crazy. It's, these people are really creative and really good at Mario. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's speedrunners and like these like really hard Mario Kaizo levels. Like that makes me like wonder if they're even human. The only Mario platformer I've ever beaten was Super Mario 3D World, and that's considered fucking easy. Oh fuck, that was a joke. Yeah, that's so easy. The two D ones tend to be more difficult, right? Yeah, yeah, because it it's all based on like side scrolling pattern, so they know where you're usually gonna jump and land when you're running through levels. So they'll place enemies at the right spot to so get killed or whatever. Yeah, but, the two D uh, ones are harder. Yeah, but I do prefer the three D stuff like Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario uh, Galaxy and Galaxy, Galaxy? Two. 
Yeah. Those are yeah, like, like it just immerses you in the world and just I don't know. It's nice to see Mario in a 3D world and environment. Yeah. And no, uh, Mario 64. I forgot about that. Yeah, the like most classic of all classic 3D Mario games. I played that a bit on the original DS Lite. Oh, I, I think that, yeah, that's the, the first screen was too small. The screen was too small. I thought it was okay. It, it, it was a little small, but um, the graphics were better on the, the DS Lite than the N64. The Mario model was redone. really. Yeah, if, if you actually search out online, the Mario model from N64 to the DS version, they're completely different. And I think Bowser is too. Nice. It's amazing. These small little things can have so much processing power. I know. And now it's and, like... It's and Nintendo is considered so like... The company that doesn't really care about processing power. Yeah. No, they they clearly don't. <laughs> Which worries me about the NX. But we'll see what happens with that. Oh, yeah. Um, It seems they've been releasing the uh, dev kits for the NX already. They've been sending yeah. it out. That makes sense because there's all already been rumors of the NX lineup when it comes out. That's why, um, that's a theory why the Zelda Wii U game is being delayed or doesn't have a date because I think they're gonna really release the new Zelda game on both the NX and the Wii U, like what they did with Twilight Princess. It was on GameCube and the Wii. You're right. The DS one looks so much better. Better character models, better textures. Yeah way better that's crazy yeah i know i know because you don't really like notice it because it's on a small screen but when i saw yeah. it i was like oh this is a lot better yeah so yeah what else are you looking forward to when um, is halo 5 coming out the 27th isn't that the day that you're leaving yes <laughs> so yeah i get fucked over with that um the good thing is though i have a buddy at work that's gonna pick it up for me Ah, uh, okay on the day that's launched um. Yeah, Halo Five and Fallout Four are my main titles. When is Fallout Fall coming out? November. Early November, I know that for a fact. It's like seventh, I think. I can't remember. But I have I have that one pre-ordered as well. And then Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider is another game. And that's pretty much it. Like for game wise, I I don't know if Xenoblade X is coming out this year because nothing's been really said but it was supposed to come out for this Christmas holiday I wouldn't mind picking that up the Wii U so I actually miss the days where I have a console and a PC and the PC was mostly to play whatever I don't have on the PS3 yeah and most of the AAA stuff I'll play on the PS3 because it just runs better yeah because optimize and shit yeah, yeah I, I don't get the best graphics but my PC can't handle that shit anyway so yeah yeah it's yeah just, most of the triple A stuff I played yeah yeah it is um, like Battlefront I was hoping to record it but I can't it was too too laggy because it took too much of my CPU man well hopefully wait well hopefully the beta was a hard beta not like complete so maybe hopefully. it'll run better when it comes out I don't know why but I don't want to jinx it. I have a feeling that launch day for Battlefront is going to be terrible. I don't know why. I just... These games that have lots of people in one area is... Remember Battlefield 4 when that first came out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we'll see. Maybe maybe this time they'll be ready. They're more prepared because they have more experience on the table. So yeah, I'm looking forward to more Skyrim and more Dragon Age Inquisition. And I still want to play Witcher 3. I still want to play Metal Gear Solid 5. No money, no time. <laughs> Fuck. Um, um, I still remember the, the day I bought my PS3. I took a week off work just to play that shit. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> and I played so much. I, I think I had the first Infamous. Uh, I had NBA 2K. 12 and I had the first Ratchet and Clank of the trilogy okay, that was on the yeah. PS3 I really really want a PS4 but I, yeah. I, I don't feel like paying for internet though 
to be online. Oh, to be online, yeah. Yeah, it sucks how Sony went the Xbox way. But... Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to feel about that. I understand it, but I don't like it. I think they kind of had to. I mean, with the amount of times that they got hacked so easily on the PS3, I so they're they paying for more it. security. Yeah, I think it's security and better servers yeah. and service. Period. I I I I wouldn't have mind paying if my currency would isn't that shit. Yeah, I kinda, my currency yeah. has been dropping like shit. So yeah, that sucks. Oh man. So yeah. Um. Oh, I saw the trailer for the new Ratchet and Clank movie. I'm super excited about that. Ah oh, man, I forgot about that. The Ratchet and Clank movie. I remember that being talked about so long ago. Actually, during PS3 like days when it was like first out, they were talking about that. That should be good. Hopefully, I hope. I want it to be good. Good video game movie, please. Oh please, please, please! I love Ratchet and Clank. It's definitely my fav, one of my favorite franchises of all fucking time. Yeah, and they get there's like it's easy with Ratchet and Clank. It's like comedy, action, sci-fi. It's it has everything to be a good movie. This is hopefully the writing is good. Yeah. Um, the trailer showed that it could be good. I think that story said. I think it's an origin story for the movies. I'm not. I'm not too sure, but uh, it does have that Ratchet and Clank feel to the movie, okay. from the trailer. Yeah. So okay. hopefully, please, please, please don't suck, please. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about this. Um. So did you know Total Biscuit have been fighting cancer for the last couple of years? No, he. I never heard anything about that. So yeah, he's he's actually been going to chemo a lot. Um. So he's been um, It's after all his chemotherapy has, mm-hmm. It's been for a few months now And he just went for a checkup So all of the cancer in his bowels are gone yeah. But th- there are spots on his kidney I think oh, Or is it liver? I think it's liver And he says the doctors told him it's not uh, It's inoperable And he has 2-3 to three years He's still there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. Like, that's a... That's... Like, a lot to take in. How do you in. take that? Yeah. Two to three years to live. And it's just like... Yeah. I, I don't know. I would not know how to react, honestly. But he did say that two to three years, um, the numbers are like that is because usually people who get it at this stage are really old people. Yeah. So he's kind of young, so he says he's definitely gonna fight it. So hopefully oh, he doesn't yeah. go away in two to three years. I yeah, really like his shit. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's been it, that's been the big YouTube bullshit hmm. that came out. So yeah, yeah, fuck cancer. Hey cancer, fuck you. I know, fucking cancer, useless, useless, useless cells. Um, I actually read a thread on Reddit once. Um, I think it was Ask Science or something, yeah. like. Like, uh, can humans potentially live forever kind of thing? Yeah. And then one of the guys said, um, because these people are like actual biologists and all that, that answers all these questions, right? He said, technically we can't because sooner or later cancer will get us. Yeah, I could see that. It's just, it's just, it's there, right? It's just yeah. whenever, whenever it creeps out at a certain time in your life or it doesn't. Yeah, seriously, fuck cancer, man. And and medical bankruptcy is like the number one reason why Americans are bankrupt. Yeah, it's <laughs> that sucks for them. It's so expensive down there. So yeah, healthcare people, healthcare. It's very important. We don't really have proper healthcare here too. I have. Yep. Some of the hopefully, best I don't healthcare. get any shit. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. So yeah, I'm looking forward to not getting cancer. Yes, I think yes. most people are. <laughs> So yeah, fuck you, cancer. Um, oh, and the number one thread of all time on Payday 2's uh, subreddit is fuck you, overkill, because of the recent stuff they did. <laughs> and they re- renamed the subreddit to Payday 2 Global Offensive because they're using Counter-Strike microtransactions uh, kind of stuff. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so yeah, the, so the mods are in it too. So that's, that's cool. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, there's been episode 21 of the Play on Ultra podcast. I believe it's 21. Don't hate me if I'm wrong. Um, so where can people find you, Jordan? Currently only on Twitter. Uh, my YouTube channel is being revamped. I actually have a lot of stuff that I'm working on. I'm not going to upload it, though, until after my, um, my work trip. So after I come back, it should get videos uploaded and then i'll have a continuing schedule i just don't want to start before i left well technically you can like schedule some stuff to go up yes are you planning to do that or no i'm just gonna start uploading as soon as i get back nice yeah so yeah i'm super excited hopefully we can find some games to play together yes and uh, definitely do that so yeah um 8 bit jordy on twitter and youtube uh, yep. it's spelled a bit funny, so check the links in the description. Of course. I don't think you, you can't you can't Google it. You can't, you just can't. Google <laughs> no, it. just yeah, yeah. Just take a look at the links in the description below. And um, I'm Pupu Noob P U P U N O B on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, so yeah, if you've been listening to the Play and Ultra Gaming podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, do do leave a rating, leave a review, and subscribe. If you've been listening to you. To us on YouTube, do like, comment, and subscribe. Um, yeah, so that's it for episode 21. Thank you for listening, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.